Um, let us turn to the Bible, book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 23 to 25. We have been reading uh, Gospel of Matthew. Uh, today we're going to look at Matthew chapter 4, verse 23 to 25. We're going to hear God's word all together. Here's the word of God. And he went throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every affliction among the people. So his fame spread throughout all Syria, and they brought him all the sick, those afflicted with various diseases and pains, those oppressed by demons, epileptics, and paralytics, and he healed them. And great crowds followed him from Galilee and the Decapolis, and from Jerusalem and Judea, and from beyond the Jordan. Amen. The concept of uh, the kingdom of God plays a really crucial role in the scripture. So uh, we need to know the concept of kingdom of God. And uh, Matthew is going to um, explain it all uh, continuously. But um, today... Uh, as a, as a citizen of God's kingdom, as a children of God, we need to really get to know uh, the meaning of kingdom of God and how we really apply this into our uh, daily lives. Uh, remember, before Jesus ascended to heaven, uh, he took his disciples and you know, he taught them about the kingdom of God for 40 days. So it is that important. So Jesus preached about the kingdom of God to the people. Um, since they didn't know uh, about this, the kingdom of God, what they uh, were so familiar with is the kingdom of the world, the physical kingdom, right? So the reason why Jesus spoke about this kingdom of God and taught this kingdom of God to the disciples and to the people because they don't even know about this kingdom of God. They know what? Kingdom of the world. Uh, we know the trends of this world. We know what's going on. We know what kind of uh, things that we need to do to, to be successful. You know, we are so familiar with this and we are accustomed to this, uh, the kingdom. But Jesus felt that you guys need to know the kingdom of God. And his uh, theme of the ministry is the kingdom of God. So this is really important. Um, but we know what's going on and what's happening in the kingdom of the world right now. Those who uh, follow the trends of this world very well ended up suffering from brokenness, emptiness, and so on. So we know, even though we are following, we know what's going on here, but we see a lot of people who are following these trends and ways of this kingdom of the world, they ended up suffering, ended up wandering around. That's why the message of Jesus Christ was repent. Get rid of your first thoughts. First thought that you got from this kingdom of the world and return to God and get your second thoughts. That's what it means, repent. For the kingdom of God is near. We need to realize our need to understand the kingdom of God and taste its power and its ministry. Uh, we need to get to know this kingdom of God and really enjoy its power and its mystery. 
Hebrews chapter 6, the writer says, You have tasted the power of the age to come. You have tasted the power of the kingdom of God, the age to come. So to understand the concept of the kingdom of God, we need to understand it in this way. Already, but not yet. Um, not fully yet, but God's kingdom is established in this kingdom on earth. So you need to taste the power of the kingdom of God, the age to come fully. So when Jesus Christ comes again, and we're going to enjoy the kingdom of God fully. But as we are living in this uh, earth world, we need to taste the kingdom of God and its power. Um, we're going to continue to read um, Matthew, right? So... Matthew will take this very one verse summary and he's going to expand it uh, in chapter 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Um, so today we need to really understand um, this message very well so that we could get to know uh, what Jesus spoke uh, to the disciples and to the people. Uh, if, you, if you know, uh, chapter 5 to nine is a uh, sermon amount. It's really important a message that Jesus spoke. So today, he Matthew summarized uh, his important message in one verse, which is twenty three. Um, his words are subject to uh, chapter five, six, and seven. So we're going to talk about. His words. And his works. So he's going to talk about the kingdom of God through his words and through his works. So his works are subject to a uh, subject of chapter 8 and 9. So um, that's why we need to kind of focus on His Word and at the same time what He did on earth um, as a Messiah, as the Christ. If you look at verse um, 23, And He went through all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction among the people. That's the summary. He said, he teach in their uh, synagogues and he proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom and he healed every disease and every affliction among the people. So let me give you some kind of uh, differences between preaching and teaching. Proclaiming and teaching. That's kind of different. Teaching is where there's a careful, instructive relating of content. It's kind of from the mind to mind. So it's more careful and detailed information. Preaching is the kind of crying out. Jesus preached the kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God, Right? Gospel of the kingdom. And then he taught the meaning of his preaching, his proclamation. Uh, that's the kind of different things. Uh, William Hendricks, Hendrickson, he's a great commentator. He said this. Between pe preaching and teaching, there's a differences. Uh, though it is true that 
Good preaching is also teaching. The emphasis is nevertheless not the same. Preaching means proclamation. Teaching, on the other hand, indicates imparting more detailed information regarding the proclamation that was made. So, since his ministry is centered around his words, which is preaching and teaching and healing. So, it's all about his words and his works. That's how he ministered to the people in Galilee. Then we need to know how he ministered to us. Right? Uh, we heard about that Jesus is the Christ, he's a savior and everything, but he got to minister to you, to us. Then we need to know the method that he took. He proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of kingdom was the theme of his ministry. Um, John MacArthur said this, he never spoke of, of anything other than the kingdom of God. He never got dragged into social issues that were unrelated. He never got dragged into politics, into revolutions, into economics. He spoke of the kingdom of God. So he never spoke about other things, other issues, but kingdom, gospel kingdom. What is the gospel? Gospel is good news, right? Uh, which means there's a bad news. Since we are filled with bad news, in this world, there are tons of tons of bad news. We are so familiar with this kingdom of the world, which means we are so filled with Bad news. And Jesus is preaching about the kingdom of God, which is escape from this kingdom and enjoy its power and its mystery. Uh, Michael Wickens, uh, here's the commentary as well. He said this, Matthew uses noun gospel, euangelion, only four times, and three of them occur in the phrase, the gospel of the kingdom, found only in Matthew. The real good news is that the age of the kingdom of God has finally dawned in the ministry of Jesus. So Matthew uses the gospel, the noun gospel, only four times, and he used the gospel with the kingdom. So, what is the goodness? Goodness is the kingdom of God. This is how important it is for us to understand the kingdom of God. What does that mean? So we pray that the you know, kingdom of God will be established in my heart, in my family, in our church, in my field. We need to know what it means. Because that's the good news. God is his kingdom. He wants us to become a citizen of kingdom. And he's going to explain, here's how. Jesus died for us. He rose again from the dead for us. Our sins paid. Uh, and your, our eternal life is purchased. So that we can be in God's kingdom. So through the work of Jesus Christ, we can be in the kingdom of God. That's the gospel. You don't need to just follow these ways of the world. But ironically, we are so um, 
busy with following the ways of this world because we, we try to fit in. We try to be successful in this kingdom. We are not really interested in the kingdom of God. That's why we, we never ask, what's the kingdom, kingdom life? How can we think like citizen of God's kingdom? How can we react, respond to a certain situation as a citizen of God's kingdom? We never ask. But we are so familiar with this kingdom of the world, even though it's filled with what? The culture of death. Remember? When Adam and Eve were kicked out of the Garden of you know, Eden, you know, Cain, they you know, he, with his descendants, they built up their own city. That's the kingdom of the world. To protect themselves, to provide their security and safety. Other than, rather than coming back to the kingdom of God. Bad news is the kingdom of the world. Jesus preached about the gospel of the kingdom. Good news about the kingdom. So we need to hear the message. Uh, he's going to speak to you about this gospel of the kingdom. And then he's going to explain that. He taught in their synagogues. Within Galilee, Jesus chose to kind of center his ministry in the synagogues. Uh, the synagogue was the most important institution in the life of any Jew. Remember, uh, they became captives in Babylon, right? They cannot, they couldn't go to temple to worship God. So from that time on, they kind of established the system of synagogue. Uh, for temple, uh, there's no preaching, there's no teaching. They just offer sacrifice, right? But in the synagogue, they taught people What's the meaning of the preaching? Um, remember, uh, Pastor Sam uh, went over the book of Nehemiah, right? At the time, uh, he hired Ezra, the scribe, right? Ezra preached the word. He read the book of the law and preached. But not many people understood what it meant. That's why he chose certain uh, people from Levites or priests. He chose certain people to teach them the meaning of the book of the law, which is preaching. Jesus preached about the kingdom of God, gospel of the kingdom, and he taught the meaning of it. In this sense, when we listen to God's word, we need to know the meaning of it. That's why meditation is really important. We need to ask God, what does that mean? When you listen to God's word, when you read the scripture, you might have some kind of questions. How do I need to really um, apply this Amazing mystery of the gospel into my life. And the Bible says, God's word is living and active. It penetrates your physical body, every aspect of your physical body, and even exempt your thoughts and minds. Then we need to really understand, we need to really experience, taste God's words. Because Jesus' earthly ministry is centered on his words and his works. So I want you to really uh, ponder upon this. Do I really understand God's word? Lord, could you teach me? That's the, com the reason why we have community, covenant community. That's why we have leadership, spiritual leaders 
within our community. Just Ezra and other uh, ministers. So I want you to have some kind of yearn and desire for understanding God's word. Especially the gospel of the kingdom. What about his works? Uh, he performed, Jesus performed various kinds of miracles and signs, right? Um, there must be a reason why. Um, let me read uh, John chapter 20, verse 30 to 31. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in His name. So, we need to understand His works, His healing ministry, based upon that uh, statement. So, let me give you a story about the blind man uh, recorded in John chapter 9. A man was born blind. Jesus' disciples asked him, Who the sin, this man or his parents? And there are some cases that people get sick due to their sins, right? Yet not everyone who is sick because of one's sins. So you need to understand it correctly. If someone is sick, Oh, because of your sin. We cannot say that. Jesus' answer to this question was, this man did not sin, nor his parents. The reason he is sick is that the works of God should be made manifested. So healing ministry is not just mere healing the physical illness. It's not. There's God's purpose for healing the sick. So, um, oftentimes we misunderstand the healing ministry. We focus on just getting better, or you got healed, right? Totally forget about intention of God. Why He healed the sick? What's the real purpose? We need to know that Jesus is the Christ. Through that healing ministry. And you may have eternal life. That's the purpose of Jesus' his healing ministry. Not just mere for healing the physical illness. Is what I'm saying? He healed every disease and every affliction among the people. That's why people brought all the sick, those afflicted with various disease and pains, those oppressed by demons. So at the time, even people who were oppressed by demons this is a quotation from John MacArthur as well. It is clear from Scripture, especially the New Testament, that many physical, many physical and mental afflictions are caused directly by Satan through the operation of his demons. Chapter 9, 12, and 17 of Matthew, and chapter 9 of Mark, and 13 of Luke give abundant evidence of demon-related afflictions. The ability to cast out demons is often referred to as a gift of miracles, literally powers. The divine power given speci uh, specifically to combat, uh, combat the demonic powers of darkness. So those who are possessed, like, you know, or oppressed by demons, Jesus healed them. Why? He's proclaimed, I'm the king of kings. The Son of God appeared to destroy the work of devil, right? So his healing ministry is to present the purpose of that. So 
Let me tell you. Three outcomes. First, they confirmed uh, his message as divine. Through performing uh, healing ministry, that's the outcome. People will get to know Jesus. Wow, he's not just mere man. Just not just human. Of course, he's fully man, but fully God. Right? He is divine. John chapter 14, verse 11, Jesus said, Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. So you got to believe that I am in the Father and Father in me. So he's talking about his deity. I'm here as a man, but at the same time, I am divine. He is a fully God who can save us from total destruction, damnation, because of our original sin. That's the outcome. So if you, are, if you are sick, if you are suffering from a certain disease, don't just ask for God to heal your disease. That's not the purpose, right? If you get better, if you get healed, and you don't even know Jesus is the Christ, and you go to hell, what, what's the point of being healed, Right? Jesus wants to heal the sick. He did. What's the intention? By being healed, they, he wanted them to know that Jesus is the divine. Jesus is the Messiah. It showed that he was the prophesied Messiah because of the Old Testament had predicted a mess, Messiah of miracle power. Through healing the sick, Jesus wanted to let people know that he is the Christ. Um, if you look, look at Matthew 11, John the Baptist, he did great ministry, but he was in prison, right? And he heard about all the things that Jesus was doing, right? But uh, I'm not sure why, but he was doubting about Jesus. And um, he asked, Is that you that we have been waiting for? You are the Messiah? And Jesus answered, You go and tell John the things which you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk. The lepers are clean, cleansed, and the deaf hears. The dead are raised. The poor have the gospel preached to them. So his healing ministry is for what? For people to know that Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the Christ. And third. It proved that the kingdom was coming. Always the healing ministry, the casting out demons attached to the kingdom. So his healing ministry, heal, healing the sick, is, was related to the kingdom. Always. If you look at uh, Luke chapter 9, he called his 12 disciples and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure disease. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and heal the sick. Uh, this is a quotation from B.B. Warfield. He's a great Reformed theologian. He said, When our Lord came down to earth, he drew heaven with him. The signs which accompanied his ministry 
were but the trailing clouds of glory, which he brought from heaven, which is his home. The number of the miracles which he wrought may easily be under, underrated. It has been said that, in effect, he banished disease and death from Palestine uh, for the three years of his ministry. One touch of hem of his garment that he were could medicine hold countries of their pain. One touch of that pale hand could restore life. So, like I said, already but not yet. You need to taste the kingdom of God. It's coming. It's coming. So, his word and his works, um, he really focused on this teaching and preaching and healing the sick to prove that he is the divine, he is the Messiah, and the full kingdom is coming. So, um, we're going to continue to read uh, Matthew. So, we're going to, you know, get explanation about this first, uh, more detail in the future. But I want you to really taste the kingdom of God through His words and through His works in your life. So if you don't have His words in your life, in your daily lives, then you cannot taste the kingdom of God. You be wandering in this kingdom of the world. You be suffering from your first thoughts. You cannot have your second thoughts, which means you cannot even return to God. So through His word, we need to come up with second thoughts. Repent. We need to restore our relationship. What? The gospel of the kingdom. Jesus Christ died for us. He rose again from the dead for us. And our sins are paid for. That's the good news. Then, as a citizen of God's kingdom, what do we need to leave? How do we need to leave? So, um, that's the uh, transformation that we are anticipating. So you don't want to be in this kind of kingdom. You want to really enjoy the kingdom of God in your life. What, even though we cannot even see that in our physical eyes, God reigns, right? And Jesus Christ is the King of kings. You don't need to suffer. If you are kind of having a hard time because of your disease, since we are preparing, you know, secondary pandemic, right? Mental health pandemic. Tons of tons of people will be suffering from this illness. Some of them are afflicted mentally and spiritually and physically. Jesus healed them. Not for the sake of healing them, the physical illness or mental illness, but they need to know Jesus is divine. And He is the Messiah. And kingdom of God is coming. So I want you to become be the citizen of God's kingdom. How? Acknowledge Christ as your king. Um, king is not president, right? King is king. He has authority. So we need to surrender ourselves to him. We need to be reigned by our king. We need to acknowledge Christ as our king. Um, and follow the law 
of the kingdom. This is the reason why we went over the uh, book of Deuteronomy. How long was? Almost two years. <laughs> I, I didn't realize that, but almost two years we went <laughs> over the book of Deuteronomy. Why? We have no idea what kind of laws, the kingdom laws, kingdom of God, is looked like. We are so familiar with this kingdom of the world, but we are not aware of the kingdom of God. We need to follow the laws of the kingdom of God. If you're a citizen, and be healed. And heal the sick. Um, Jesus' disciples, um, they perform healing ministry as well. Uh, this is the purpose. So we need to get to know that Jesus is Son of God. And He is the Messiah. So that we could have kingdom life, eternal life. So, uh, when we are dealing with uh, people who are sick, who are going through some kind of tough time and because of the mental health uh, disease, and if there are some people who are oppressed by demons, uh, Jesus promised that he will heal. For what? For this reason. Um, there are a lot of um, institution out there. If you have like, you know, transmental meditation or if you have yoga or something like that, if you get healed through that uh, ways, then you're going to have worse situation. Uh, we cannot uh, really be healed perfectly without knowing this. So, uh, we need to taste that God's kingdom, uh, really, uh, specifically and realistically and practically. Let's pray together. We are citizen of God's kingdom, and He's going to reveal the kingdom life through His words and through His works. So, in your daily lives. Uh, God is going to speak to you. God is going to preach to you. And God is going to teach you. At the same time, you know, we have no choice but to go through various kinds of sufferings, afflictions. But He is going to heal you through that healing ministry that God is going to perform. We need to get to know that. Jesus is Son of God. Jesus is the Christ. So that we could have eternal life, kingdom life. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for... Um, Give a, giving us this great opportunity to get to know um, that you are um, fully man at the same time, fully God, who could save us from total depravity, total destruction, damnation. Um, and you are the Christ. Um, you are the Messiah. You are the Redeemer. Uh, we want to really get to know that. Lord, uh, from that, we have eternal life. Uh, we're going to be with God forever and ever. Lord, certain time, and often time, uh, we place our hope in this kingdom, kingdom of the world. But Lord, would you really allow us to get to know uh, what it means to be a citizen of God's kingdom? And how do we really live as a citizen 
of your kingdom in our daily lives. Um, and really hear the good news of the kingdom every single moment. And then we could be healed here and there so that we could reconfirm that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. We thank you for um, this great opportunity once again and your grace, your love. We love you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, an amazing, abundant, unfailing, unending love of God the Father, indwelling protection guidance, empowerment, filling of the Holy Spirit. We upon all the precious, your children who desire to taste the kingdom of God in their daily lives. Be both now and forevermore. Amen.